All right, Doombots, Dragon Champions Tower discussion. So this is gonna be easy. Uh, tower is a very simple kind of idea, uh, very similar to Arena in that you want to do it as often as you can during the day, as many times as it'll allow. Uh, you want to complete it every day, and then you're going to accrue resources. So Tower is very simple. You will take your entire roster, um, whomever you have, and you will complete fights along the line until you get to the end. Now, this is a hard tower. Uh, it destroyed me. The hard tower does not joke around, so I'm not going to try that again. Every day, you can reset your tower, so whether you finished it or didn't do too well, uh, you can just go ahead and reset. I'm going to choose to do a normal tower, and we'll check the rewards as we go. So starting here, the first two fights, you'll notice they're gray. Uh, that means they're pretty easy. You don't even have to use a good team. They'll even show you this is the team you have to beat. It's relatively weak. I don't have to use my main team to beat them. If I don't want to, that's fine. But every three uh, steps on the tower, you get side rooms. So the, this will be first fight, second fight, third fight, and then here you will have two options. The side rooms are just bonus fights. Uh, if you complete them, you get additional rewards, but you don't have to. For the most part, in the early stages of the game, I would recommend you can probably try the green towers. You might be able to try the blue towers, but once you get to purple, this clearly means, you know, look at the difficulty scale of the game. Gray is nothing. Green is uh, like weak, like weak investment. Blue is like average investment for the average player in the early game. And then purple is where most characters who have value will be brought to. Uh, the final fight is, of course, orange or gold, however you want to choose to see that color. And it's like the hardest fight in the fight. But you basically use characters uh, from your roster to fight all the way up. You can do additional bonus fights for more rewards if you're comfortable with the fights. They tend to have restrictions like Order or Panda or Orc or some Human, something along those lines. You'll be able to figure out what they are, and if your roster is where it needs to be, uh, you can do them. Don't feel like you have to build to do the side towers. It's just bonus rewards you get for having a stronger overall roster. Uh, it becomes a little bit easier in time to do those side stuff. For example, I could do pretty much all but these two reliably based on whether or not this says like pandas you know because i haven't really invested in pandas right now but it is a total of 12 mandatory fights when you complete all uh, a fight and i'll show you one right now as i build out a team sure take your time yeah we'll just use these guys they have some sustain they have some damage we should be okay on this fight and again just like the previous video you're gonna see i'm fighting a team that's way weaker than me so i should pretty much crush it and because I'm very confident in this team's ability, uh, I'm going to just go ahead and click auto. Oh, never mind. I forgot. This game keeps auto on because it's supposed to because I really don't need it to. Uh, and I can always click it off before the end of the fight if I don't want it in the next one. So uh, clearly I just crushed this fight. This isn't a real person, but it is based on a real person's team. Uh, so you don't have to feel like, oh, no, I took something away from somebody else. Now, as you go higher up, you clearly get more rewards, but most importantly, you get tower uh, credits, mystery sapphires, uh, and these are going to be used in the tower store. You get a little bit of gold, you'll get a little bit of rare XP tome, and of course, you have to complete tower battles as part of your daily quests, so make sure you do this every day in the same way you do arena. Once you get to this point, you'll see that the next team on the list is maybe a little bit stronger, but... You know, 30, level 35 to my 52, power this. Again, this is another fight I can easily auto. You can kind of see where their placement is. So obviously the first guy right here is the leader, and then everybody else goes wherever. I will talk about placement in a separate video, but in general, just to touch on it because I mentioned it, uh, the only character that matters as far as placement is concerned is the leadership position. Uh, characters with leadership in that position, which is the first slot in the middle, uh, will give the team whatever their buff is depending on how you build the team. Everyone else, uh, this game doesn't have adjacency. You either attack everybody or you attack three random people. It doesn't really necessarily matter where they are. So you don't placement on this team doesn't make too much of a difference except for the first person. Uh, other than that, that's pretty much everything when it comes to tower. Once you've completed tower a hundred times, whether it be 
uh, the hard mode 100 times or this one 100 times, you can now auto the tower. I have only done it six times. This feature was not available in the game when I first started playing it, and I have not done tower since then. So this is about six days of me completing the tower and trying the hard tower a couple times, but I'm just currently not in a place where I can easily do the hard tower, and I don't want to spend the extra time when I can just click auto. Now we have all of that conversation done. We're going to talk about mystery staff sapphires and the store they come in. So again, just like the arena uh, char, uh, store, the tower store allows you to buy character shards. And some of them are of immediate value to you. Venome being a very good early game demon and pretty decent late game demon. Mortha not necessarily being a good end game healer, but in the beginnings of the game, she is a, a very easy to access, free to play orc. That is a healer and a reasonable one at that. Uh, Puncher Face is a demon that's not good, but again, very similar to Mortha. You can use them in the early stages of the game. Robin Bad, same thing, mediocre human. And Fow is uh, an okay panda. So in this situation, you would buy whatever character makes the most sense for you. For me, it would be Mortha because I'm trying to 7-star her. For some people, it might be Venomate. You know, whatever works for you, whatever you're currently working on, whatever uh, is good for you, or maybe you have an idea of building a team, that's what you're going to build here. Uh, this is not a store where you're going to get a ton of resources. There's a very hard limit to how many you can get a day based on whether or not you complete the tower. So in reality, you're probably not going to be able to make more than one or two purchases from the store a day. It does refresh every eight hours. Uh, you can force a refresh for Dre coins. All of that basically just means you want to pick a target in this store and buy the character shards uh, to help you get that target. Nothing crazy here. Uh, outside of, of specifically this, there's really nothing else to discuss regarding Tower. But the one thing I do want to say before we go anywhere else is when it comes to uh, getting extra value. So these side rooms that we were talking about, they do have different requirements. And the earliest one and two tend to have requirements that are order teams and clans teams. So one of the things I keep advocating is in the early stages of the game, regardless of whether you're spending a ton of money or not, the first two teams I would recommend working on are orcs and humans. Orcs are a very good self-sufficient team that will be useful for a very long period of the game. They're also relatively early access. There's a lot of nodes to farm the characters, and a lot of the characters are, are received through things like completing achievements and random milestones. You'll get a lot of Tromgar and Mantha shards from that. So because orcs are that easy to access and because humans are that easy to access in the early game, if you build up your orcs as your clans team and your uh, humans as your order team, you will pretty much almost always be able to do the side rooms as well as complete the campaigns you have to do. And you can worry more about things like arena or having a really strong hybrid team for some other game modes as you build your roster. Again, there's a lot of different ways you can play this game. You can skip and try to farm the best single character in the game on day one, but everything is a trade-off when it comes to games like these. You are taking value from position one, or you're borrowing from Peter uh, to get value in position two, or to pay Paul. If you want to be really, really strong in arena today, you're going to lose more battlegrounds than you're going to win because you can't really invest in that many good teams um, versus the, the one team you're working on. If you want to be really good in, in tower, you're going to have a wider investment in your roster, which means you're probably not going to have a very high arena score. Um, it, and then if you want to succeed at events that come up that require you to have like rogues or, or rangers, which are different character types in the game, then you're going to end up in a little bit of a different situation where you're, you can't do everything. So in a lot of these games, some people really, really, really like to harp. Really, 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 really like to harp on the idea that like, uh, if you're strong in arena, you're going to be good. And to, to some extent they're right, but it's important to remember that this game has a lot of different game modes, and in general, it's better to get uh, good at all of the game modes than to be great at any one in particular, uh, regardless of whether you're spending or not. But if you are spending a little or a lot of money in this game, 
you you still should follow the core correct actions like there are still things that you're supposed to do that are smart and, and well built but you can use your money to do them faster which will accelerate your time into getting into whatever the next best thing is or if you're spending that much money you could do multiple things at one time and not worry about it so i don't think there's any one right or wrong answer for how to start or who to work on just feel out the characters you get and know what they're supposed to do since some characters help each other since some characters are easy to access always look at the game from a perspective of well if the character is easy to access at the very early stages of the game it's probably not a great end game character but if they're early to ac if they're early access uh characters then they're probably going to be useful early and then keep that in mind as you invest i've said before you don't have to worry about how much you invest in a character if you're below level 60 because level 80 is the cap so if you feel like you're putting gear and resources into a character that just doesn't make sense to you because you're like well this character is not going to be good in endgame don't worry the amount of gear it takes and resources it takes to invest in a character before level 60 or 50 or whatever is is truly irrelevant compared to the amount of gear it takes to finish a character at the end of the game so don't feel like you're wasting resources because what you're using your resources for is intelligently building out to get to the end game that's my uh stick on this hopefully you guys enjoyed it comment below and let me know if there's anything i missed about tower uh i didn't specifically talk about hard tower because hard tower is literally the same thing as easy tower just harder so if you can beat hard tower early congratulations you're doing way better than i am at level 52 but you know it, it's all based on some percentages and goes crazy anyway have a good night have a great day i've been tony skinjili and i will catch you later last thing tony's gift promo code enter it